Looking for an upmarket family car with retro stylings and rugged capability? Hi, I'm Tom from OSV. This is the Mini Countryman, and today we'll find out if this premium small SUV still stacks up against the competition. Mini Countryman sticks out like a sore thumb in Mini's lineup. It's the brand's largest vehicle, and out of the five model Mini range, it's the one with the most rugged capability, and that's thanks to the all wheel drive capability provided by those all four variants. This means that it is the most practical choice out of the brand's lineup for tackling both bumpy country roads and smooth city streets. It's still the only plug in hybrid Mini model available, despite initially launching in the UK over five years ago now, back in 2017. Uh, we've since been witness to the introduction of the Mini Electric Hatch, and this model did get a little bit of a refresh in 2020. This is the version we're going to review for you today. But since then, no subsequent electrified offerings have made their way to the UK market. So then, is it any good? Well, we're gonna answer this question by exploring if this refreshed second gen Countryman still stacks up in 2022. Is it a desirable small premium SUV offering? And should you buy one over rivals like the Audi Q2 and the Volkswagen T-Roc? Before we start though, do head over to the OSV website to browse the latest special offers on mini models, including the Countryman, and subscribe to OSV for the latest in-depth vehicle reviews. Taking a look at the front end then, it's definitely less mini and more maxi. Of course, it's in that iconic design, but when compared to the rest of the car's shape and size, it just looks a little bit wrong. Something just doesn't look right to me. Uh, you get LED headlights and fog lights as standard. I like the uh, chrome strip that wraps around the really googly eyed lights there, gives the car a lot of personality and character. Uh, speaking of personalization then, there are 10 different colors to choose from. Four of these are standard paints and they will depend on whatever trim level that you've decided to opt for. Then there are six metallic colors and these can be added to your configuration from around 595 pounds. Um, so it's great that you can really personalize this Countryman to meet your requirements and bring out your personal character. On the left hand side of the vehicle we have the charging flap if you've opted for the plug-in hybrid variant like we have. Uh, this supports AC charging both at home and at a public charger. The alloy wheels then, so as standard these are 16 inches in size with the Cooper, uh, because we've opted for the top spec exclusive trim level, we have 19 inch alloys, though as you'll likely agree, the design of these, nothing to write home about really. Uh, the door mirrors, uh, they're in the body colour that you would have chosen for the vehicle, and uh, no blind spot monitoring feature on those as well, bit disappointing for a new car. Um, you get silver roof rails up here with, with exclusive trims, and if we peer over we can check out the glass sunroof, a definite highlight of this Countryman. I quite like the chrome coated door handles, though they are going to get very grubby with your fingerprints. Just down here we have the all four badging to indicate that this is a four wheel drive vehicle, and then right at the bottom we've got the silver side skirts. Not a massive fan of these though, I wish these were just coated in that uh, chrome material, they just look a little bit boring as a result. And if we head towards the back we can check out the plasticky massive um, wheel arches were which are a little bit ugly i mean the side profile here isn't really wowing me though i do like the metallic color that we've opted for with those blues and purples just popping out in the sunlight really nice the back here is in that iconic mini look that you either love or hate at this point and i'm a bit disappointed that you don't get the union jack led rear lights with the higher spec models uh, these come as standard but we don't have them with the exclusive trim so that's a bit disappointing Though I do like how prominently the Countryman badging is displayed across the entire width of the tailgate. And if you opt for the plug-in hybrid variant, you can see the badging there. I mean, this is essentially just a Mini Cooper on steroids, isn't it? So let's open up this boot and see how much space we have compared to those key rivals. The boot capacity on offer with the Countryman as standard is 450 litres, so that is more than the Audi Q2 and the Volkswagen T-Roc, though because we've opted for the plug-in hybrid model, that drops the boot capacity down to 405 litres, uh, on par with the Q2, but not as much as the T-Roc, although that is still enough space for three, possibly four, 
oops, of these small carry-on suitcases. And due to that low loading lip, as you can see there, it's really easy to lift this up and slide it in to the back. So as you can see, three there comfortably will fit, four at a push when we stack them high to the uh, parcel shell. There's a nice amount of practicality on offer in the back here, which is great to see from a car which has, well, essentially been designed for venturing off into the countryside. So on the left, we have an area covered by netting, perfect for, well, golf balls to be very specific, but you know, objects that like to fly around and roll around while on the go. Um, let's move this into the middle so we can check out this piece of elastic here to strap in an, a, an object. And then we have a hook there, one on the other side as well. If we take the suitcase out a moment, we can lift up the high adjustable boot floor, always great to see. And there's a nice area here for your charging cables and you can keep that away from other objects that you want to take up the you know the majority of the space in the back here i'm gutted that there's no way to fold down the rear bench from the boot here would have been nice to have that option you know maybe a button or a latch there's none of that so we've got to head around to the side where you'll spot some straps next to the isofix fittings so the seats fold down in a 40 20 40 arrangement and you can fold down the middle seat independently let's pull the strap spring loaded so do be careful and this will allow you to slide objects through into the rear cabin so perfect for an overzealous trip to wicks going to lean around then and fold all the seats down that will give you a maximum luggage capacity of 1390 liters with the standard models and with the plug-in hybrid this will be 1275 liters sadly there is a bit of a gap in the floor between the height adjustable boot floor and the rear bench and that means any of those smaller objects might just fall through the gap bit disappointing though thanks to that low loading lip it's really easy to slide those longer and awkwardly shaped items all the way into the rear cabin it's a pretty flat of course excluding the uh, massive gap there um, so golf clubs skis scaffolding perhaps not scaffolding but along those kind of lines will fit very very nicely and even an adult's bike as well very comfortably in the back um, it is worth noting when you uh, lift up the seat it stops at around 90 degrees so there's a good amount of adjustability here if you want to cram in that extra item for the trip to the tip then it's possible because, yeah, there's a good amount of practicality on offer with this rear bench. While I'm here, let's fold up the seats and hop into the back to see how comfortable it is for a growing chap like myself. So guys, my first impression of the back here, really, really comfortable, very impressed. So you might be able to see that my knees are quite high up, so that may get a little bit uncomfortable for the longer journeys, though at the moment this is not an issue due to how comfortable these lounge leather carbon black seats are. These come as standard with the exclusive trim level. Really like the design of these and they're nice and plush and premium. So legroom, very, very good indeed. I'm gonna stretch my legs out the whole way. Um, the bottom of my legs are just touching the front of the seat here, but that isn't an issue due to the uh, leather that's used, which is very uh, spongy and it's absorbing a lot of the impact there. Uh, you get a pouch just in front of me there, perfect for an iPad or some sweets. Though if you are eating sweets in the back here, do bear in mind that this material is a finger print magnet so you're gonna have to wipe that down occasionally also love the suede trim on the uh, doors here very very nice and premium and the door bins are very very spacious indeed so perfect for my bottle that really comfortably fits in there it's perhaps too big I can see that rolling around while on the go headroom though is where some passengers might have issues so I'm 5'8 and yes I'm very insecure about that uh, but that's not the point um, if I sit back here you can see that the tops of my hair are nearly touching the roof lining if I sit up to simulate somebody who is six foot or over yeah could be an issue you might just touch the top there that could be because we've opted for the sunroof which typically trims off a couple of millimeters off the roof lining so if you know you're going to have passengers six foot or over in the back you may not want to go for this feature but Come on, look at how much light this is letting into the cabin. Typically with the middle seat, there's a bit that you can fold down and you're rewarded with a couple of cup holders. Not the case here, but you can just fold down at the middle seat completely if you want, and you've got a makeshift armrest. Be decently comfortable for a long journey. Um, just down here then, we've got an air conditioning unit, especially for the uh, rear cabin, though there's no way to control the temperature, so the person in the front can just blast hot air at you if they're feeling particularly cruel. Though, to make up for that, there's a couple of USB-C ports. Wow, 
always great to see. You'll find a couple of Isofix fittings on either rear seat. It's great to see that the flap um, doesn't come out unless you try and force it out, of course, uh, so you're not gonna lose it. Um, but is this a practical family car? So let's open up this door here. On the Qashqai, the door opened around 90 degrees and that allowed you to fit in, well, pretty much any kid's seat quite easily. Um, here it's more like 65, 70. So it could be a squeeze for those larger kids' seats. A little bit disappointing considering this is a vehicle aimed at the family segment. Let's slide on over to that middle seat, see how comfortable that is compared to the others. And it's, it's okay. I mean, there's a bit of plastic digging into my back as expected, you know, the upholstery, they haven't made as much of an effort with the middle seat as they have with the other seats. Um, the transmission tunnel, still bulky, but it's not as bulky as you'd find with equivalent uh, small SUV rivals, though you still will be straddling it and uh, encroaching on the personal space of the other rear passengers, though this will be fine for a short journey and you have full access to the cover for the sunroof and you can just do that and annoy your other rear passengers endlessly. If you're tantalized by what I've shown you of the Countryman so far guys and you want to explore your options with a vehicle specialist to find that model that best suits your particular requirements then do pick up that phone and give us a call on 01903 538 835 or you can just click the pop-out banner just up there to book a date or time that best works for you for a quick chat. That's enough for the back then. What is it like in the front for the driver? Let's find out. Well, it's quite a bold cabin in the front here and we can certainly say uniquely mini. Um, the seat's really, really comfortable, guys. Um, as you would expect from a premium BMW Mini model. And I think that's helped largely by that lumbar support that really digs into your back. And if you've got a backache, um, this should help remedy that, especially in combination with those heated uh, seat options that you get with the higher spec trim levels. You can adjust the intensity of the lumbar support via the rotary dial on the left-hand side of the seat there. Um, there's a good amount of adjustability to be had as well to find that perfect driving position. Let's climb all the way up. One thing I'm a bit sad about is electronic adjustment doesn't come with those high spec trims, but you uh, get those manual levers. So I'm all the way up now, really nice view of the road ahead. You can of course come down pretty far as well. And you can slide back if you are six foot or over and need that extra leg room. Lots of room to work with there. The uh, steering wheel can be brought towards you as well as up and down, like so. Yeah, adjustment shouldn't be an issue for you guys. Really easy to find that best position for you. The design of the interior that you can see here is shaded silver. This is what comes with the exclusive trim level. There's four other interior designs to choose from. If you're not a fan of this one, do get in touch to explore those in more detail, guys. Uh, but as you can see, the theme of shaded silver, lots of chrome everywhere around the air vents, around the infotainment cluster around the buttons and knobs for the uh, air conditioning, as well as on the door handles as well. And I quite like it, it's a nice effect. Um, it's certainly a breath of fresh air from the piano and gloss black interiors that we see on a lot of new models these days. Really love the grippy lever that wraps around the steering wheel. Provides quite a lot of resistance when you push that in. So that's gonna be great for a hot summer's day. You won't find your palms slipping down there. And it just adds to the premium feel of the cabin. Behind the steering wheel isn't a digital driver display, which is a breath of fresh air. We've got this analog speedometer cluster, which I really, really like. Uh, there is a tiny screen though, just um, below the speedometer there, just about one or two inches. And you can have this show how much range you've got left in that battery, which is very, very handy. Let's turn our attention to this circular infotainment cluster that houses an 8.8 .8 inch touchscreen, and you can connect this up via Bluetooth and Apple CarPlay. I'm gonna boot the car up now to show you what the screen is like. So yeah, really, really quick there. It will, in just a few seconds, notice that I've got my phone hooked up via Apple CarPlay, and there we go. It'll automatically come on for you. So my smartphone apps have been mirrored onto this display. I can navigate through it using the rotary dial just down here in the center console. And of course it's a touch screen as well so I can swipe through the different options. Let's just head into Google Maps as an example. Very, very quick to load. If we zoom in and out, a little bit of a delay there. Not too bad though, but that is very smooth in itself. It's a very impressive display. Um, this is a similar technology to what you'll find in the latest BMWs, which in my opinion, house the class leading infotainment setups. So yeah, 
If you love what you find in a BMW, you're going to enjoy that in the Mini Countryman. Around the infotainment cluster, we've got a nice strip of ambient lighting. I would have liked to have seen more of this throughout the cabin, to be honest. Uh, but as we navigate between the different options on the screen there, you can see that this lights up and changes colour. There's no option to just have a colour show up on the screen all the time, like purple. I mean, definitely purple, the best colour. Uh, but it's a nice effect. Also happens when you uh, change the intensity of the temperature, as you can see there and also the intensity of the air conditioning. Yeah, it gives this uh, cabin a lot of personality. I've not really seen that in a car before. Really, really nice. Also like how there's buttons underneath this display. They're not all incorporated um, into the screen itself. So we've got buttons for media right there. And of course, we've got the climate controls down here. Love the rotary dials for the climate controls. Really easy to, and to use while on the move uh, due to their size. And then just down here, weirdly enough, We've got the button for the driving mode. Uh, normally I'd find it just down here near the uh, gear selector or ideally up here by the steering wheel, though you hardly ever see that in a lot of new cars. No, it's this button here. It's quite easy to miss. Um, at the moment, we've got the car in the mid mode. That's the standard normal driving mode. We can put it into green though, and that will maximize fuel efficiency as much as possible and eke out every possible bit of juice out of that battery. And then we have sport mode. Sport mode is quite important for this Countryman because it can be a little bit sluggish and slow off the block. And that's especially important when you come to a junction or a roundabout and you want to nip into a tight gap in traffic. Do remember to just flick it into sport mode, otherwise it's going to trail off quite slowly and that could lead to a little bit of a disaster. We've had some sketchy moments as a result of not putting it into sport mode. So yeah, really important to consider for this Countryman. Let's continue working our way down the centre console then. So there's a tiny little compartment there, perfect for an iPhone. Let's just plot my gorgeous purple iPhone 12 in the middle there, see how that fits. And it's not a particularly snug fit, but that's going to hold. Um, fortunately, not wireless charging which is a bit of a shame. There's a couple of cup holders there as well, always good to see. And here's the gear selector. Um, we've opted for the uh, seven speed manual, so quite easy to put the car into all the different gears there. You just uh, toggle a button on the back of that gear selector. You can also shift it to the left if you want to and stick it in manual or sport mode. Um, just down here then we've got the rotary dial for controlling the infotainment display. And we've got some shortcut buttons for the screen itself. Um, to navigate to from there, and the electronic parking brake is also found down there. If we open this up, we've got a quite well, we've got some masks, it seems, <laughs> but if we take those out, there's a quite a generous um, compartment here. No USB port or anything in there, there's just a USB A port up there that I forgot to mention, plus a 12 volt socket for a tire pressure monitor or something like that. There's also another compartment, so if we just lift that bit up there. Another tiny compartment there, perfect for, you know, spare bits of chewing gum and bits like that. What's the glove box like? Let's pop it open and it's just a traditional BMW mini glove box in that it's nothing remarkable. Perfect for the manual though. Um, let's pop my bottle into the cup holder, see if that fits. Yeah, nice fit, nice and snug. And if you want to let some air into the cabin, take advantage of that sunroof. Flick it once, just up here above the rear view mirror and that will let some air inside. Then just flick it again and it will retract fully for you. As you can see, only the front passenger and driver can take advantage of the roof. Uh, the rear passengers are kind of left out in that regard. A little bit disappointing, but yeah, they're perfect for a bright sunny day like today. That's about it for interior then, guys. Let me know what you make of it in the comments below. What is the Countryman like to drive in 2022? Let's take it for a spin. Entry level Mini Countryman Cooper variant is powered by a 1.5 litre turbocharged three cylinder petrol engine outputting 136 horsepower. Uh, it's pretty sensibly priced and uh, performance wise it's equivalent to something like the Ford Puma a one litre EcoBoost mild hybrid variant. Uh, front wheel drive comes as standard with this car and if you want automatic you'll have to opt for uh, the optional seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission. Uh, it's worth noting that this model is much lighter on its feet than this hybrid variant. And that's because this hybrid model weighs a whopping 150 kilograms more than its combustion powered sibling. And of course that has an impact on the driving experience. 
So the uh, plug-in hybrid variant, that outputs 220 horsepower, significantly dropping that 0 to 62 miles per hour time down to 6.8 seconds, so pretty respectable there. That's second only to the performance John Cooper Works model in the uh, Mini Countryman lineup, and that should provide plenty of oomph um for around town driving, as well as getting up to speed on a fast moving A road. How much range then do you get with the uh, plug-in hybrid Countryman? Well, it's up to 31 miles, so that could be perfect for a short commute, uh, you know, quick errands around town, dropping the kids off at school, uh, and the shopping run, bits and bobs like that. Uh, when it comes to charging this car, so it would do a zero to 100% charge in four hours when you plug it into a domestic socket. If you really want to cut that time down, uh, you can do it in two hours from a seven kilowatt wall box. So pretty quick, uh, especially when compared to other hybrid variants. Um, a huge benefit of opting for the hybrid Countryman is that you benefit from lower vehicle excise duty, also exemption from emission and congestion zone charges, uh, but also it's a very appealing company car option and it's certainly the reason why we chose this as OSV's company car. So because it outputs up to 44 grams per kilometer of CO2, uh, for 2022 to 2023, that places it in the 14% benefit in kind tax bracket. So that's pretty low there, and therefore the company could take advantage of some low uh, tax benefits. So definitely a highlight uh, to consider, uh, you know, opting for this model over its conventional combustion powered siblings. Just going to return to the point about range. So I've just noticed on the computer, it's saying I've got 11 miles left in that battery. And that's despite on the right hand side of that uh, display saying that I've got nearly a full charge um, in that battery. So that's a little bit disappointing, a lot lower than the, uh, the range that Mini claim. Uh, but it's worth noting, you can take advantage of regen braking to harvest otherwise lost energy back into that battery to maximize a range efficiency. So you just lift up on the accelerator, the car starts to slow down, and as a result, it charges that battery for you. It's worth taking um, advantage of, especially if you're running low on range. Um, and if that battery depletes fully, uh, the petrol engine will kick in um, automatically. So that's something you don't have to worry about. What's the suspension like? Well, it's firm, and that gives this car quite a sporty uh, driving feel. Though, unfortunately, this does come at the compromise of comfort. This car definitely isn't as comfortable as some of its key rivals, like the uh, Skoda Kamiq and the Volkswagen T-Roc. Uh, so driving for a country road, you go over a pothole, you're going to feel the impact of that throughout the cabin. It's quite severe, unfortunately. It also struggles uh, to smooth out any undulations on B roads. And then also on those faster A roads, the ride quality isn't as smooth as I would like, certainly. Um, this can be remedied, though, if you opt for the optional adaptive suspension. So this will set you back around £450. And this does a better job at smoothing out those uh, the ride quality there. Uh, but I'd say if comfort is your priority, do look more towards those rivals. And yeah, even if you opt for those larger alloy wheels, it just makes that issue even worse. So the steering is uh, rather hard. It's gonna take a little bit of time to get used to, but it is responsive and quick. And in combination with that firm suspension, it just serves to reinforce this car's somewhat uh, sporty feel. Um, the good thing is there is minimal body lean when you go around corners. Um, and that's even better when you opt for the hybrid variant with those large batteries weighing the car down and it as a result handles corners really nicely. And you've got these nice bulky side cushions as well that hold you in place comfortably. Uh, though don't expect like a go-kart style driving experience like you would with the mini hatch when going around these corners. It's a lot more refined in that sense. The Countryman Hybrid we have here is also an all-four variant, so that's all-wheel drive, providing great traction in slippery and snowy conditions. It's also the Countryman to go for if you want a great towing capacity, uh, so it can tow up to 1,800 kilograms, 300 kilograms more than the regular two-wheel drive Mini models. Noise and vibration then, not bad at all. So if you have enough charge left in the battery, the car will set off um, from standstill using electric power and as such is very quiet from speeds just under 30 miles an hour. As you do build up to speed though you're going to notice a little bit of wind noise just gustling around those door mirrors unfortunately um, as well as you know taking into account the firm suspension you're going to feel the impacts of those potholes the undulations they're going to resonate throughout the cabin and that creates a little bit of road noise so that's a little bit disappointing there. I will say though the brakes are very responsive and they don't make an awkward sound unlike some of this car's rivals as you uh, approach a stop and the six-speed 
automatic gearbox, very, very well implemented. Um, it glides through the gear seamlessly and there's no awkward jolting, but yeah, you would expect such refinement from a BMW vehicle. Visibility is this car's real pain point. The chunky side pillars here make it quite difficult to judge a gap appropriately at a junction or roundabout. Um, I would have liked there to have been perhaps a little pane of a quarter glass there just so you can see through because as it is, you've got rather large door mirrors which is obviously great for finding a great view of what's behind you. But because they are so large and so is this side pillar, you are going to have to kind of lean around like that to judge a gap appropriately. Uh, the view out of the rear view mirror isn't bad at all, especially when driving along, but when it comes to reversing into a bay, uh, you may find it a bit restrictive, as is the view over my shoulder. Uh, you've got a pane of quarter glass there that does obscure your view of what's behind you. Uh, so, so there's some definite improvements that could be made when it comes to visibility. Obviously, the sacrifices have been made here um, in favor of the car's retro and admittedly uh, distinctive stylings. What is the uh, tech like to use while on the move then? Well, it's just incredibly easy. So this central display here, you can control it using the rotary dial just down there um, in the center console. You'll see this in a lot of the latest BMW and Mini models. I absolutely love this setup. So easy to get to the different options. If we head over to the navigation section, head over to map, you'll see how quickly that loads. We've already got a uh, route plotted back to the office, but uh, when you just punch in an address, it will generate pretty much instantly for you. There's no faffing around there or loading. Um, you get a touch screen after all as well, so you can just do that with the display. As you can see, there's very little lag. Always great to see. Uh, behind the wheel itself then, we've got a traditional kind of retro styled analog setup. Um, on the far right then, it shows you how much fuel is left in the tank and it's really easy to see because it's uh, lit up. And then you've got a little display integrated in the uh, speedometer itself at the bottom and you can toggle between the different options here. I just have it show how much charge is left in the battery. If safety is something that is very important to you when you're looking for your next vehicle, uh, this car was crash tested back in 2017 uh, when the second generation model originally released and it was awarded the maximum five stars uh, by Euro NCAP. Um, it comes as standard with automatic emergency braking, that's part of the reason why it was awarded uh, such a high rating there. Um, if you do want to maximise safety as much as possible and take advantage of all those enhanced uh, driver assistance functions, you're going to have to dive into the different packages on offer here unfortunately. Um, this is often the case with a lot of new BMW Mini models, those more advanced features are locked behind optional extras, but it is great to see that even the entry level variant here is very very safe. If you'd like to find out more about the different variants on offer with the Countryman range and deep dive into the specifications to find that perfect model for you, then now just click that pop-out banner above to head over to a different video where we deep dive into the trim levels and drivetrains. Okay guys, we're gonna head back to our car park now. If all that parking assistance tech is important to you, then consider opting for the Comfort Plus Pack. This sets you back around £1,600 and it includes the rear view camera. So we've opted for that for this particular model. Uh, it also comes to stand up with the John Cooper Works model itself. Um, let's just stick this car into reverse then and we'll show you what the rear view camera is capable of. So you can see there's guidelines there that help you navigate into even the tightest of parking gaps and sensors are lighting up on the side there to show you how close I am to the curb. Uh, with the Comfort Plus Pack you also get the front distance control and that helps you negotiate into a space from the front so it will light up from the front and it will show you how close you are to that curb. A um, bit weird that front and rear parking sensors don't come as standard with the Mini Country and that's a bit disappointing so if parking assistance tech is important to you do consider that Comfort Plus pack. Right then guys let's wrap up this review. What's it gonna be then should you buy, lease or finance a Mini Countryman in 2022? Well there's a number of reasons why you may want to look more towards this car than its rivals uh, particularly if you're after your next company car. Uh, the plug-in hybrid variant outputs very little CO2, placing it in a rather generous benefit in kind or company car tax band, plus you can take advantage of low vehicle excise duty and exclusion from emission and congestion charges. But if you're not bothered about getting a plug-in hybrid model, then there's lots of other things 
things to enjoy about the Countryman. The design of that high quality and upmarket interior is uniquely mini. It stands out from the competition and it's a breath of fresh air when compared to some of those key rivals. Plus you get that brilliant infotainment system on par with what you'll find in the latest BMW models. It's intuitive, easy to use while on the go and it seamlessly connects with your smartphone. What more could you want? Practicality is pretty decent as well. 450 litres for the boot with the standard versions of this car. A little bit of a shame that this does drop with the plug-in hybrid version to 405 litres, but you saw how much stuff we can fit in the back there. Perfect for those uh, suitcases for you know a small family holiday up the country. And that rear bench is really flexible. You can fold that in a variety of different ways to really pack in as much as possible. Plus the ride quality is impressively smooth when driving at their slower speed. So yeah, a lot to admire about the Countryman. What don't I like? Well, the looks. Um, unfortunately, they're not for me, but I will admit the Countryman does stand out among other small SUVs in its segment. It is distinctive and unique, which can't be said for some of its rivals. I mean, a lot of those cars look the same, if I'm being honest. The Countryman could also be better equipped. In fact, it's quite difficult to get your head around what comes as standard and what doesn't, what is reserved for the high spec trim levels and what is included as an optional extra. It is all just quite confusing. And the fact that front and rear parking sensors do not come as standard, well, that's just a crime against humanity. I'm disappointed by the reduced boot space on offer with the plug-in hybrid variant and as a result some practicality is sacrificed there and the suspension is just far too firm for my liking. You do feel the impact of the road a little bit too much more than I would want. But overall, if you are looking for a uniquely styled small SUV with a really nice interior, then you should add the Mini Countryman to your list of considerations. To find your perfect Mini Countryman, or perhaps you have another small SUV in mind, do get in touch with OSV to explore your options with an expert. Give us a call on 01903 538 835, or you can click that pop-up banner above or the link down below. If you enjoyed the video, guys, do give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe if you haven't already done so for the latest in-depth vehicle reviews. And once you are subscribed, do click the notification bell just down there to get notified as soon as a new video goes live. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. But take care and safe driving.